Hello, my name is Ki Song, instructor of mathematics at Georgia Highlands College. And today's topic is inverse functions. In this video, we will discuss what are the inverse functions? How do we test whether the functions are inverse of each other? We will look at domain and range relationships of the inverse functions. How can we find inverse functions when we are given the formulas or graphs? In order to understand this lesson, you must know about composition of functions. So if you haven't done so already, please go back and watch the video on composition of functions. Let's start with the definition of inverse functions. f inverse is an inverse of f of x if the composition of the two functions give you an x. Essentially, this means that the inverse functions reverses or cancel each other. So you can think of these two f and f inverses canceling each other out and giving you just an x, like it should. And the other way, f inverse and f cancel each other out, giving you just the x. So let's say we have f of x equals x divided by 2 and g of x equals 2x. So if I were to input the 10 into the f of x, I would have 10 divided by 2, which will be 5. Now, if I input the 5 into the g of x, it will become 2 times 5, which gives me the 10. So what happened here? I started with the 10, and the f of x changed it to 5. And what did g of x do? Change it right back to 10 that I started with. So it undid the f of x. And same thing will happen if I plug in a generic x into the formula. So plug in x into the f of x, I will have x divided by 2. If I plug in x divided by 2 into the g of x, I will get 2 times the half of x, which gives me 1 whole x. Once again, I started with the x, it was changed, it goes right back to where it was. How can we test whether the functions are inverses of each other? Here we have f of x equals 2x plus 4, and g of x is equal to x divided by 2 minus 4. So inverse functions undo each other. So you might be thinking, here we have 2x, which is 2 times x, and x divided by 2. So which are opposites? And we have plus 4, and we have minus 4. So you might be thinking, maybe they are inverses. But we cannot just look at these and say they are. We have to find composition of functions and see if they are equal to x. Because that is the definition of inverse functions. The composition of functions returns x each time. So let's start with the f of g of x. The g of x is x divided by 2 minus 4, and we'll be plugging this into the x in the red equation. So we have 2 times the x, which becomes x divided by 2 minus 4, and plus 4. If I were to distribute this 2 into the parentheses, 2 times half of x is regular x, 2 times negative 4, negative 8. Next, I combine like terms, the negative 8 and positive 4, and I get x minus 4, which is not what I was looking for, because it says if it's inverse, the final result should be just an x, and I do not have that, which proves that f of x and g of x are not inverses of each other. So I can stop right now, but just to show you that it does not work the backwards. So this time we'll be plugging in f of x, which is 2x plus 4, into the g of x. So we place the x in the g of x with the f. We have 2x plus 4 divided by 2 minus 4. Next, we take half of 2x and get an x over here. Take half of positive 4 plus 2. Now combine like terms, and we get x minus 2. Once again, my final result is not x like I'm supposed to, 
once again proving that they are not the inverses. Let's look at the relationship between domain and range of inverse functions. Here we have two inverse functions, which we have proven in the previous slides. And what happened was that if I were to plug in the 10 into the f of x, I get half of 10, which gives me 5. And if I plug in the 5 into the g of x, it doubles it, gets me right back to 10. So the domain or the input for f of x was 10, and the range or the output of f of x was 5. And the domain of g of x, which is what I've input, was 5 for the g of x, and the range was 10 for the g of x. What do you notice about these inputs and outputs? They are reciprocal or opposites. The domain for one function was the range of the other, and the range of one function was the input for the other. So if you have f of x equals y, x is the input because that's what you plug in, and what you get out is the y, the range. In the inverse functions, they just become a swap. You just swap x and y. It used to be x, becomes y, and y just becomes x in the inverse functions. We can use what we just discovered when we are looking for the inverse function. So here you're given one function, f of x equals 2x plus 4, which is same as y equals 2x plus 4, because f of x is same as y. So since we know that the inverse function are just replacing the input and output, or replacing x and y's, that's what we'll do. Replace the x to a y, and y to an x. And then solve for the equation, get the y by itself. So first, remove the 4 to the left by subtracting 4, and we get x minus 4 equals 2y. Next, get rid of the 2, and 2 is being multiplied to y, so the opposite, divide by 2 both sides, and we get x minus 4 divided by 2 is equal to y. So the inverse function, inverse of f of x, is equal to x minus 4 divided by 2. Notice that this was not the g of x that we saw earlier, which is x divided by 2 and minus 4 on the outside. What if you're given a graph of a function and you're asked to sketch the inverse function? So one of the points on this graph is 0, 4. And we know that inverse functions swap x and y. So if I swap 0 and 4, I get 4, 0, which I can plot on the graph. Another point that I can see is 1, 6. Swap the x and y, and I get 6, 1. And if I repeat the process for each of these points, I have the following graph. So these are the f of x and f inverse. Do you notice anything about these graphs? They are being reflected over the equation y equals x, which is a diagonal line on the graph. And it makes sense why they will be reflected over the graph y equals x, because after all, we just swap y and x. Here we're given graphs for f of x, do you think you can sketch the f inverse? If you have questions or comments, feel free to send me an email. Okay, thank you for watching. Have a great day.